The Book of Job is commonly thought of as a book of philosophical discourse. Job's story is structured in the form of a debate among the participants. Everyone expresses his or her position on the main theme of the book, righteousness and evil. The most important elements in the book of Job are 1. Job suffered innocently. And his suffering began after God allowed Satan to test him. 2. Job speaks to God and tries to discover what his sin was. Job prayed to God with an intimate and deep connection. Not hiding his troubles and speaking openly to God. If I have sinned, what have I done to you, you who see everything we do? Why have you made me your target? Have I become a burden to you? Job 7 verse 20 3. Job's wife was the first to tell him that his exhaustion from touring after his bout with illness made it difficult for him to curse God. She said to him, Are you still maintaining your integrity? Curse God and die. Job 2 verse 9 But Job is angry at her request and continues to believe in God despite all the difficulty and sorrow. 4. After Job prayed for his friends, God restored his greatness and doubled his previous property. Job, who had lost a lot due to Satan's interference with God, gained more after all the attempts to bring him down than he had lost. He is rehabilitated in all aspects of his life, health, family, and finances. God was kind to Job because he was satisfied with his faith in him after all the plagues. 5. Job kept his faith throughout the book, he prayed, struggled, and eventually overcame. He believed in God despite all the lows he had reached, and he did not curse God as his wife had encouraged him to do. Let us return to the perception of reward, which is one of the pillars of the Bible. According to this view, God judges the actions of the Israelites with absolute justice. He generously rewards the righteous while punishing the wicked. The story of Job, a righteous and upright man who was a great believer in God, is an example of the concept of reward, as God generously rewarded him for his faith. One day, there were two meetings in heaven between God and Satan, during which they intervened to determine whether Job's faith was true. To determine whether Job's faith was true, God allowed Satan to do whatever he wanted to Job, except kill him. As soon as he gave his permission, the devil murdered Job's ten children robbed him of all his possessions, and struck him with a boil, which was a terrible skin disease. Job was a righteous man who fell victim to a shocking intervention between God and Satan that took place in heaven. In the place where Job had nothing more to lose and nothing to live for, he found freedom in its purest form. In the place where he wished for death, he was liberated from all fear. Job asks whether God justly judges the Israelites, a belief that is one of the cornerstones of the Bible. The book opens with the following words. Job 1 verses 1 to 3. There was a man in the land of Oz whose name was Job, and that man was blameless, upright, fearing God and turning away from evil. Seven sons and three daughters were born to him. His possessions also were seven thousand sheep, three thousand camels, five hundred yokes of oxen, five hundred female donkeys, and very many servants, and that man was the greatest of all the men of the East. The presentation of Job as a perfect, honest, and God-fearing man is the most important key to understanding the story of Job. His ten children would occasionally gather to eat and drink together. Job, used to make sacrifices at the end of each feast to atone for his actions, so that it was impossible for him to accumulate any sins for which he would be killed. Because he was a righteous man, God rewarded him generously. He was the richest man in all the countries of the East. He owned thousands of sheep, cattle, and camels, and he was also blessed with seven sons and three daughters. However, all the goodness he earned through his righteousness ended up being his great downfall. The righteousness of the innocent Job was tested. Job 1 verses 6 to 8. 
Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. The Lord said to Satan, From where do you come? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From roaming about on the earth and walking around on it. The Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? For there is no one like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, fearing God and turning away from evil. God gave Job a certificate of honesty, to which Satan responded. Job 1 verses 9 to 11. Then Satan answered the Lord, Does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a hedge about him and his house and all that he has, on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands, and his possessions have increased in the land. But put forth your hand now and touch all that he has, he will surely curse you to your face. Satan raised doubts about Job's righteousness. According to him, the great wealth he received from God is the real reason for his innocent faith. However, if the great property is taken from him, then Job will curse God. God agreed to Satan's challenge, but set one condition, he must not touch Job himself. With the authority in his hand, the devil then turned Job's life into a living hell of grief and pain. First, the devil sent a band of robbers who murdered Job's shepherds, and robbed the seven thousand head of cattle and the five hundred camels that he had. The robbers left only one shepherd alive, who ran to tell Job about the magnitude of the evil that had befallen him. The second coming was announced when the fire fell from the sky and killed thousands of sheep and their shepherds, except him. The third messenger came and told Job that the thousands of camels he had were also robbed. While this was being spoken, the fourth herald also arrived to report that a great wind from the desert had brought down the house on the heads of his ten children, killing them. Job 1 verse 19 When suddenly a mighty wind swept in from the desert and struck the four corners of the house. It collapsed on them and they are dead, and I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. The successive blows made it clear to Job that the meeting with the devil was not a matter of chance and that God was punishing him for an unknown reason. This evil was not enough to weaken Job's innocent faith, so God and Satan met again. And this time, God asked the devil where he was and what his actions were. And this time he also replied, wandering in the land and walking in it. Then, God turned his attention to Job and said, Job 2 verse 3. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him, he is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. And he still maintains his integrity, though you incited me against him to ruin him without any reason. How is it possible that Satan could incite God to allow such a criminal act that is contrary to natural justice? And injure an innocent person? Job 2 verses 4 to 5. Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin. Yes, all that a man has he will give for his life. However, put forth your hand now, and touch his bone and his flesh, he will curse you to your face. There is nothing that man loves more than his life and the integrity of his body. However, if God permits Satan to inflict physical harm on Job's body, the poor man will be so tortured that he will eventually surrender and curse God. To this, God replies to Satan. Job 2 verse 6 The Lord said to Satan, Very well, then, he is in your hands, but you must spare his life. Satan was given permission to do as he pleased with Job, but not to kill him. This means that Job had no way to die and be redeemed from his torment, unless he cursed God. Job 2 verses 7 to 8. Then Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. And he took a potsherd to scrape himself while he was sitting among the ashes. A boil is a skin disease that causes terrible itching and inflammatory boils. 
Boyle was the sixth of the ten plagues with which God struck Egypt, and now, to drive Job's mind crazy, Satan inflicted him with the same plague. When his wife saw his terrible suffering, she showed him the way to die and be redeemed from his agony. Job 2 verses 9 to 10 Do you still hold fast your integrity? Curse God and die. But he said to her, You speak as one of the foolish women speaks. Shall we indeed accept good from God and not accept adversity? Job did not sin with his lips and did not curse God. At the same time, he refused to bow his head and would not accept the evil of the decree. In a place where he had nothing more to lose, where death was a blessing and a refuge, he was left with the truth, a pure, clear, and sharp truth. Job was able to express his anger and say everything in his heart due to the boundless truth. Thanks to his boundless faith, God rewarded him generously with wealth and a fulfilling life. We hope you learned something new today. If you did, give this video a like and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more informative and entertaining content. Thank you for watching, see you next time.